I'm back. Hey, everybody. Welcome to season two of Let's Talk Chicago Bears. Um, this is going to be kind of a short show. I'm just kind of getting back into the swing of things here. Um, just going to do a hello show. I'm back. Me in the face. You know, remember, remember? Dad's face on a woman's body just isn't fair. <laughs> so, hello, Chicago Bears fans. Lynn is back for another season. I hope you guys had a good summer so far. We call it a summer break because of uh, the football season. So, what I'm going to do in, in the next couple weeks, because let's face it, spring or spring training, whatever you want to call it, camp. It's kind of boring. Not a lot happens, right? We, our first game is next Saturday. Uh, so looking forward to that. So we'll talk more about that next week. I'll do a show next week, one show, one or two shows to talk about the upcoming game, and we'll go from there. And then each week I'm going to do a little segment on what I did over my summer break. <laughs> so I hope you're all happy and healthy. Um, we're not going to get into political bullshit here on what you should and shouldn't do. You know, you do whatever you want to do, but let's all just be um, healthy and get this country back running, right? But And, and we want to keep, we want the games to have people at them. So the more people wear masks and get vaccinated, the better chance we'll be able to fill the stadiums, right? So, as you guys know, there was another game added to the uh, schedule this year. And um, that means the Bears, there's going to be 17 games this year um, instead of 16. And only three preseason games instead of four. Um, so, the... Um, and the game that was stuck in there, number 17, is the Bears are coming to Vegas, baby, in October to play the Raiders. But this is the, the worst part. The tickets are $500 for the nosebleed seats. Are you freaking kidding me? No. So me and my son were like, no. And what kills me is the stadium, the new Raiders stadium, is literally 10 minutes from my house. It is right down the street. And, you know, when I lived in Illinois for all 59 years that I did, and we would go to the Bears games often, but that was, I, I, I don't know if I, I'm pretty sure I probably told you, but I lived 10 minutes from the border of Wisconsin, so I was up north in Lake Villa. Um, and so when we went to the Bears game, it was a whole day event getting down there. Um, in the early days we drove because when my husband was still alive, he was a designated driver. But after he had passed away, we're like, well, me and my sister and friends were like, so then we would take the train. So that's an all day event. You know, you get down there about 11 ish, you take off, you get on the train about nine 30, you'd get there about 11 ish. And then you go to the game and then you, we never got on the train right away to go back because um, you let the crowds go back. So we would wait till like the six o'clock train and go back. So it was an all day event. And, um, and now where the stadium is literally down the street from me, I can't go because it's too expensive. But I, you know what? Even if I had the $500 to spend on the Bears game, I don't know if I would for just out of principle because you know what? That's just ridiculous. You know, here they're trying to make – see, last year the Raiders Stadium was open for the first time, but they had no fans. So – and how they were going to pay for it, the, the new stadium was with all the conventions and trade shows and all that stuff coming. And guess what? Those aren't happening anymore right now in Vegas. So, they're, you know, everyone's real worried that they're going to start putting it on the residents. And that's like, ah, oh, no, that ain't happening. Um, so that's why they're probably charging so much for a ticket. So anyways, it's BS. That's all I'm saying. BS. So anyways, me and my son will just sit in the living room and be, you know, be able to pause the game. You can pee when you have to. You can get a cocktail, and it's not going to cost you uh, 12 bucks for a beer. Uh, you, you know, you can eat cheap, so that's all right. So, 
anyways, so that's my rant on that one. And um, so, yes, I was basically saying we want fans back in the seats. I think that would be really cool. I really, really hope so because it's not the same without them, right? And um, so I do have a really good story for you guys today. I, it's really one of the reasons. I wasn't going to start my show until next week, but after this happened, I was too excited. I had to tell you guys. So you know how in the past, regular subscribers will know, I'm not going to go over it, but in the past, the past four or five years, I have written George McCaskey, the president of the Bears, letters. And... Um, the first one was a just, it was back, and I, I'm not going to go back, but it was back before we had hired um, Nagy and before we got Trubinsky. And when the Bears, I think it was uh, 2016, the Bears just were terrible. And they, you know, um, they just were bad. They were an embarrassment to the league. And so I wrote a scathing letter to him about that. And and I and he wrote me back as my regular subscribers would know because I showed both letters and read them and then um, uh, last year um, in December I wrote him a letter and I'm not really sure what the letter what, what it was all about no 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 then I wrote him um, yes 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 it was last year I wrote him because he wrote me back and the date on it was Christmas Eve pretty cool huh so um and I read that letter too. So George and I are like pen pals. We're like this now, even more. So I wrote him a letter in June of this year, congratulated him on a, a great draft. I think it's one of the Bears' better drafts they've had in a long time. And I asked him to be on my show. You know, I knew deep down he was going to say no, but I figured, what the heck? I'm a believer asking does not hurt, and no doesn't really hurt. I mean, you could take it personally, but please. So I wrote him. And it was funny because the other day I was thinking, God, I haven't heard from George, but this is their busy time. So you know what? And then I'm like, he's not going to write back. And his answer is no, by not writing back. The next day, there was a letter from George in the mail here. It just came Tuesday. Um, and he wrote me a nice note. And he basically said, um, I can't show you the letter because his phone number is in there. So this is what he said. He said, you know what? Um, I'm sorry it took so long to respond. I'm just really busy. And, um, and he's like, so I did ask around about doing your show. And um, there's a long story to it, but I'm going to give you the short version. I can't do your show. I'm sorry. He said, I'm sorry, Lynn. I know, you know, but I just can't. And he said, but if you'd like to hear the long version, and he put his phone number down, and he said, give me a call. Are you kidding me? Give me a call. What? Yeah. So, I, you know, I did. I was even, I was nervous. Isn't that funny? I don't get nervous too often talking to people, but when I do, it can be really bad because then I kind of talk like, I talk a lot, but I tend to talk fast and uh, louder and my laugh is like, <laughs> it's really weird. And I found myself doing that on this call. And I even said to him, when he answered, oh, so so I called him, and I went to voicemail, of course. And then, but he called me back. I'm like, even cooler. He didn't wait for me to call again. He called me. <laughs> when? In Vegas, baby. Pretty damn cool. I know, this is my life. It's so sad that this gets me excited, but it does. So we talked. I'm like, oh, my God, Mr. McCaskey. And I said, I'm so nervous. And he's like, ah, don't be nervous. And um, so we talked for about a good 10, 15 minutes. It was a great conversation. Um, I'll just hit the highlights. He had, he had just got done watching the Bears uh, practices. And I said, are you stoked for the season? And he said, oh, yeah, I'm real excited. And he goes, they look like they look very energetic. There's a lot of positivity, energy going on out there. He goes, he's like, I'm really, um, he's like, I, I have a, good um, outlook for this season. And I told him, you had a great draft. I said, I got to tell you, when Pace went up and got Fields, my son and I were floored. And I, I couldn't believe it. And because um, we were watching it and we were talking to each other and then it came, it happened. We're like, what? And um, Mr. McCaskey said to me, yeah, earlier that day in the morning, Pace had went up to him and he had already had the plan then. He said, this is my plan. 
And, um, and McCaskey said, Mr. McCaskey said, okay, you know, and he didn't really, I mean, he didn't say that he didn't think it was going to happen to me, but <coughs> the, his, his, his tone of his voice when he was telling me the story made it sound like, yeah, okay, we'll see. Right. Like the rest of us, but it happened. And he said, yeah, I was like shocked and happily shocked. So we talked about that. And then I asked him if he was coming to the Raiders game and he said, if COVID allows it, Yes, um, and of course, Virginia will be there, and they'd like to come see the new stadium, and he's like, so are you going? And I said, I can't. And he's like, why? And I said, because the tickets are $500 nosebleed seats, seats, and he's like, and you know what he said? I got to give him, he's like, that's just wrong. So I'm assuming they're not charging that much at Soldier Field. So, and it is wrong. And I said to him, and what makes it worse is that I live right down the street, and I can't go. And I said, but I can't afford $500, nor can my son. And really, I told you earlier, the principle is, I don't think I'd pay it. Because if the Bears lost and I paid 500 bucks, I'd really be pissed. You know what I mean? I mean, I paid 500 bucks for the Super Bowl, but not for a regular game. No. I do want to see the stadium, though. I'm going to get in there eventually. I, I will. But so he was like, oh. So I was like talking to him about it. And I was trying to, I was like drunk dropping hints but he was not picking up on it and no disrespect but he's a guy you know he's not thinking he's thinking bears you know nothing else and he wasn't picking up on the fact that I was like hey you know it's only me and my son you know we could sit in your box with you we'll try to behave <laughs> but he didn't get it and then somebody a friend said to me well maybe you can copy a couple tickets I'm like yeah he didn't pick up on that either so but I do have his phone number and the game is not until October, so hmm. there may be another Lynn call to Mr. McCaskey to kind of hint, hint, hint. You know he can get tickets. I mean, he don't pay for them. The Raiders give them to him. And, I, you know, sitting in his box would be kind of weird because me and my son are very vocal. So I, I got to thinking about it. It's probably not a really good idea because, you know, if, if, we, if the Bears did something bad, we're going to say it. You know what I mean? And we're not going to be nice about it. So... Probably best we don't sit in their box. But I wouldn't mind two tickets, George. Come on now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Although, kind of and kind of not, you know. <laughs> um, so that's, isn't that a cool story? I mean, I'm like, I called him and I'm like, and when he called me and I'm like, I'm talking to George McCaskey. And he's like, eh, you know, and he's he's thinking it's no big deal, right? You know, look at my look at my wing over there. I'm taking off. <laughs> Anyways, um, very, very nice man. And and the other, I'll tell you the other funny thing. So, oh, when I was talking about living up in Lake Villa, I said, yeah, I live 10 minutes from the border of Wisconsin. And he says to me, Lynn, we were just having a great conversation. Why did you have to go ruin it and mention that, that word? And I go, what word? And then I realized Wisconsin, he goes, you said it again. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. He goes, we, we don't talk that word around here. And I said, I know. I hate the Packers too, sir. And I go, and it's it was rough living up in Wisconsin, um, in Lake Villa because in all the stores up there, they have Packer stuff. And I used to get really mad. I'd walk into like Kohl's or Walmart and there'd be Packer stuff. I'm like, hey, this is Illinois. This shouldn't be in here. My son would be like, oh, my God. My son was be like, oh, Lord, we don't know that lady. But he laughed and he goes, "Yeah, we don't talk that game, that that word in this in this um, building." And I said, "I know, I don't like it either." And I said, "You know, I really would like to get back to beating them." And he goes, "Me too." And I said, "You know, I always want the Bears to go to the Super Bowl every year, Mr. McCaskey. And when they don't, I say, well, at least beat the Packers." And he goes, "I go, that could be my Super Bowl." And he goes, "I hear you." And we laughed and um, we had a really good time. So. Very nice man. Very, 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 very nice. I was really had a good time, and it was just an honor to talk to him. And I, and I did tell him how I admired his mother, ninety eight years old. She, he said she, they had a board meeting the day before on Monday. It lasted eight hours, and she was there the whole eight hours. She's one tough cookie. You know what? That's why the players have to win another Super Bowl before she leaves us, because she is ninety eight. Okay, so. That's my story, and it's pretty cool, right? So you know I'm going to be calling him during the season now that I have his phone number. 
Oh, and I didn't tell you why he couldn't do the show. He said he couldn't do the show, and I get it. He went to his communications guy, and he said, yeah, you could do Lynn's show, no problem. He said, but the problem will be, once you do Lynn's show, any person that has a bear show or anything is going to be lining up at your door, and then when you say no to them, you're going to be the jerk. You're going to be, and they're going to be all over you. So you're going to have a lot of people coming at you once you do that. And he was like, yeah, and I realized that. And I said, that's okay. I, I knew you'd probably say no, but there's a little glimpse. But, you know, that's all right. I totally get it. You know, it's just unfortunate. So that's my cool story. And uh, the Bears are in camp. We know that. It's been re going relatively good. Uh, you see, the only sad thing is Eddie Goldman comes back after sitting out all last year. So happy to see him back in shape. And then he gets put on the COVID list. Here's the guy taking care of himself for a whole year, and he comes back and goes to the training camp, and boom, he, he was exposed or could have been exposed. You know, it's like could have been maybe. And so I'm like, Eddie, hope you don't have it. Um, stay healthy and all the bears. And uh, you know what? Next Saturday, we'll see Andy Dalton come out, and then we'll see Fields probably in the second half. So... Uh, We'll see, right? So really, that's it, guys. There's not really a lot to say right now. We've, we, they're really just going through the motions. And um, as we get closer to the season, obviously, then we're going to start talking about starting lineups and all that stuff. So I just wanted to get my feet wet again and see if I remember how to do the show. Of course I do. Just put a microphone in my in front of me, and I'm, I'm good. I'm good. So I missed you all. I hope you had a, you know, you're having a great summer, and uh, I'll be back next week. I hope I made you laugh a little bit, because we know this face will do it, because remember, dad's face on a woman's body is just not fair. <laughs> and people who are new to the show that, you know, don't watch regularly, that's a running joke. Um, so, from this big Bears fan... I cannot wait for the season to start. I'm so stoked. I will say go Sox, um, but they're not playing very well. But today they do play the, they play the Cubs the next three days, so we'll see what happens there. And, um, you know, I'm just glad to be back in the saddle again. Back in the saddle again. <laughs> and next week I'll start with what I did on my summer break. I have some good stories, some good parties I attended. And, uh, yeah and a wedding, and, uh, oh no, yes, a wedding reception, and I was at a bachelorette party for four days, so I've got a lot of good stories, so uh, I'm glad to see you back, I hope you all, you know, tune in, I know regular, the non-regulars are going to be like, this is a weird show, but when the season starts, it's a good show, and it gets better and better and better. Okay, so happy to see you back, guys, I hope everybody's good, and remember, Help somebody out if they need it. If you're in the store, give a helping hand. Smile at somebody. You never know what kind of a day they're having. And getting a smile from somebody sometimes really helps. Now, we're back to wearing masks here. So um, we just started it this week. Back to that mandate. Um, because everyone's coming to Vegas and bringing the, the virus. So we're getting it. So, um so, but back where you all are, I don't think you're in masks yet, so smile at somebody and do something kind for somebody because, you know, that's what I'm all about, right? And as that is said, I'll see you next week and keep on rocking and rolling from Vegas, baby. Have a good one.